Hi, I'm Joan Newcomb, and today's Morning Musings is Time and Expansion. I'm doing a series of daily morning musings, and I'm using posts from my blog, Adventures in Density and Effort, as inspiration. Now, I wrote these posts a while back, and the world has completely transformed since then. So if I encounter anything that seems out of date, or I have gained more information and knowledge since then, I will interrupt myself and give you the most updated information. If necessary, at the end, I will also summarize the topic based on what's going on in the world world today. Also, I have some special offers, so stay tuned to the very end to see what they are. Time and expansion. I'm visiting my 83-year-old mother for two weeks. It's always an interesting experience coming back here to Washington, D.C. I lived here for about a third of my childhood, and I have no emotional connection to the place. And it's such a different environment than where I live now. This is the hub of government and politics, and I live on an island near Seattle. Two completely different worlds. Have you ever noticed that when you go home, it seems smaller than when you remember it as a kid? Or if you step into an elderly person's home, you feel like you've stepped back in time. You can say that of course the place seems smaller because you're an adult now, except that I've been this height since I was 13, so that can't exactly be it. Or you can say that an older person's home is furnished in the style of when they were more active or prosperous, so of course it remains that way. However, that's only one aspect of it. As a clairvoyant, I notice that it's easier to read the past than the future because the past is denser and the future is more diffuse. Vibrationally, the energy of the past is slower and the energy of the future is lighter. It's harder to detect the future because my physical vehicle isn't that energy level yet. It's like a computer being able to read older software but not being able to handle newer technology. I wonder if things seem smaller because they're more molecularly dense. The atmosphere of my mother's house is contracted as well. Some of this might be that she's lived here since 1987, and it's also in a city, so blinds are closed or drapes are drawn for privacy. And she has macular degeneration in one eye, so her vision is limited. And at 83, she isn't as spry as she used to be. However, I'm wondering how much of her physical limitations contribute to this and how much of this is energetic. So I'm trying an experiment. I'm going to meditate daily and simply use the energy of present time to clear the atmosphere. My intention for this this visit is to have her make some decisions before decisions are made for her. She's stubborn and independent, fearful, a champion procrastinator, and a major pack rat. There is no way to cajole her or coax her into moving. I figured if I spent two weeks here, I might help her organize some of her piles and help her feel like moving is possible. It doesn't matter what age you are. If there are parts of you that are fixed and not moving or barely moving, it's going to manifest as a block in your life in some way. If you have physical problems, you can trace them back to something that got stuck two years or more ago. And sometimes it's actually thoughts or concepts rather than something that's physically happened. And the same goes with finances. Financial blocks come from the same source. Relationships blocks do as well. It can be very painful to change these things in conventional ways. Imagine staying crouched in one position for a long period of time. It hurts to stand up straight, even though standing up ultimately feels better. However, if you start with energy, change can happen more easily and effortlessly. Maintaining my own high energy level and clearing the energy of the house, I'm curious to see what happens. This is more than feng shui, the Asian practice regarding energy flow through buildings. I'm not going to place a mirror here or hang a flute there or put a bamboo on a particular corner, although all those things could certainly help, and I could probably persuade my mother to try one or two of those. I'm not going to physically move energy. I'm just going to work energetically. I'm anticipating that she'll find it easier to go through the piles when the energy is clear. And as the energy clears, she'll find it easier to make decisions. And I'll write about my own discoveries next week. Notice where the energy flows in your own life and where it doesn't. What piles have you got there? What rocks are in your stream? As an experience in your own life, Try gently, effortlessly bringing light into those places. Imagine what present time must look or feel like. And to me, it's clear, almost translucent sunlight. And it feels as subtle as a breeze on your face. And notice what happens. And leave a comment below. I love reading your comments. Now, I wrote this in August 2009, and I had started going to my mother's regularly, and one of the things I did do that week was I was able to clear about seven boxes of that had gathered in her dining room. I hadn't yet been able to convince her to get a companion care to at least visit once a week. That was the next year, 2010, I was able to do that. 
And then in 2011, I went with her to her annual physical and got the reference to a neurologist. And when I took her there, she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. So I was in denial at this time when I wrote this. All the atmosphere of not moving or not changing was also because there was Alzheimer's. And with Alzheimer's, the being in some ways has already left and just the body personality is moving through life based on its own patterns and physically then the machine starts to break down and the being does come and go through it but that's what I felt because I went back in 2011 and ended up camping out with her for two years first to help deal with Alzheimer's and then they discovered that she had cancer and I realized that it would be easier for her to pass in her own home and so I just hung her down and I acted as a midwife to her returning to spirit so we all have the opportunity to continue continue to sort of update our energy systems and update our perspectives with the world. Uh, an old-fashioned way would be clearing blocks, but a gentle way of doing it is just to bring things into the present moment. I used to think of the present moment as something very restrictive, but what I find is when you actually bring your energy into the present, you take it from the past, and you also you bring your energy back from the future, and when you're in the present moment, it's extremely expansive, and really when change can start to happen. And the other point I do make here is if you start just making energy changes, if you start to change things in meditation, if you start to change things through your intention, it really does help facilitate easy and effortless change. I think of the energy of effortlessness as coming from consciousness. So as I said, try this for yourself because using the energy of present time is very potent and just try it for a week and see what happens. Leave a comment below and let me know. I love reading your comments. And if you like these videos, please click a thumbs up to like them. And you can click on the bell icon to subscribe. And when you do this, it tells YouTube to share this far and wide and get this to someone who really needs this information. And if you'd like to have a free sample of one of my consciousness techniques, click on the link below to the Skypox technique. It will give you an expanded perspective of your life. It's a great way for problem solving. And if you want to know how to do this for yourself, Manifesting Money and Miracles is a self-study course that I have where you learn how to embody energetic frequencies by changing your internal energy, it creates money and miracles manifesting in your external life. So click on the link below to Manifesting in Money and Miracles to get that. And if you want to know more, my website is joan-nukem.com. I do individual sessions where I take a look at the essence of who you are and what's going on in your life today. I can also take a look at what's coming up for you in the future. I can take a look at relationships. I can take a look at jobs. I can take a look at moving. I can talk to dead people. And it can also help facilitate facilitate energetic changes as well. And I record it just for you. And if you want to know more how to do this for yourself, Manifesting Money and Miracles is a great primer for my coaching special where I work with you one-on-one -on -one and give you advanced consciousness techniques so that you can transform your life. So go to my website, joan-newcomb.com, and I'll see you tomorrow in another Morning Musings.